Welcome everybody to this new week of information retrieval. So um, what is on the menu today? Well, first I will end this, right? Uh, we started discussing Boolean retrieval. I'm almost done actually. I just wanted to, uh, to uh, wrap things up with one or two more uh, items. And uh, right after that, we we'll do a lot of languages today. It's going to be a language lecture. Um, all right, but uh, first uh, let me finish this. Then I'll come back to you uh, with clicker questions when we start the next uh, part of the lecture. Right, so where did I leave you? Well, uh, we have this posting list, remember? These are the lists for each term of the documents that contain the term, right? So it saves space uh, compared to the matrix. So where I left you is that we had this query, our and com, so these are two terms that we look up. So we have the two uh, posting lists that we found in the index. This is for the first word, this is for the second word. So our and com, so this is for our and this is for com, right? We want to intersect these two lists. So this is where, where we actually left up uh, last time. And uh, I quickly showed you the algorithm and actually you actually discovered it yourself because that was uh, something quite intuitive. So remember how it happens. We initialize these two pointers right there, starting at the beginning, and then we just iterate, right? And then it's going to move to the right. So at every iteration, we first compare the two documents, right? And here, surprise, surprise, we have the same number. We have one and one. That means that document one contains both the term our and the term home. So we have the intersection, right? So one is in the intersection. So we copy it over here in the intersection of A and B, and there we go. And then we increment both pointers, right? Because one, we are done with one, all right? So we are now here. And then we just iterate. So now we compare again, but now it's not the same. We have two and we have three. So we know that two is not in the intersection, right? So we can increase and uh, move on to the next one. So we always take the lower one, three, we don't know, who knows, maybe there's a three higher up there, right? So this is why we stay here. But for the lower of the two numbers, we increase. Now we do it again, okay, we have three and four. It's not the same thing. So we increase the lower one. So this is the three that we increase, right? Because four, we could still have a four below, right? So we increase and, oh yes, we do have a four. Now we have a four and a four. So this is green and I copy it over. So you see how that works? And then we just iterate all the steps, right? We already saw all the cases. So now we, inc we increment both because that was a success. Five is the lower one, we increase. Six is the lower one, seven is the lower one, eight and eight, bingo. We have it in the intersection, we increase both. Now the lower one is nine, the lower one is 10, the lower one is 11, oh, 12 and 12 in the intersection as well. All right, and then we reached the end. So this is the intersection. So we can say that documents one, four, eight, and 12 solve this query. Oh, I didn't think of copying the slide again. Uh, they basically answer this query. So we have four documents that we computed from the intersection of these two posting lists like this. All right. So that's easy, right? Um, so let's do it with the union. How do we do it? Well, that's easy. It's exactly the same way, actually. It's just a slightly adapted, of course. This is for OR. N is the intersection. OR is the union. So now we do the union of these two. Uh, and we start also at the beginning, we compare them. So it's the same one. So we copy over the one here. And now we compare again, it doesn't compare here, but it's the union, right? So now we do copy over the lower one, right? Because it's the union. That's how it differs from the intersection. So we have the two here and then we copy over the three, now four, but pay attention just once, right? Because it's uh, on both, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Two. Oh, yeah, they're, 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 we went out of room here. Yeah, unions can take a lot of place. And there we go. We are done. This is the union. So the first thing that you observe is that uh, the intersection uh, is going to eat up less space than the union. So the union, you have to be careful. This is where you can explode your memory, right? But for the intersection, then you know that it's going to be smaller than the smaller uh, posting lists. All right smaller or equal to the smaller posting list, to be precise. All right, this is the union and the intersection. So uh, for the knot, you probably can guess uh, how to compute the knot, right? And you can also probably guess how it's going to also explode your memory potentially. Um, all right, so what uh, do we have now? Well, we could have more complex queries. Maybe we just don't have two terms, but we have a very complex uh, Boolean formula. So we have and or not maybe with parentheses and so on and so on. So of course, 
you can compute in any way you want because mathematically it, uh, it's commutative. You have all the rules of logic, so you can rewrite it in any way you want and you can compute. But it's not forbidden to be smart, right? And maybe we can optimize things a little bit in order to preserve uh, our uh, computation resources, right? Um, so the first thing is that imagine we are looking for these terms here. And let's start with a simple one, ETH and Zurich and uh, Bibliopo, let's say. Um, does anybody have any idea which posting lists I should start with? Because I have three here. So I'm probably not going to directly compute the intersection of all three. I mean, I could, of course, but let's say I pick two of them to start with. What do you think? Where, where should I start? Yeah. So uh, do an end between the two smallest ones and then an end again. Yep. Yep. How do we know the smallest ones? Sorry? How do we know the smallest ones? How, how do I know which are the smallest? Anybody? So your answer is correct, right? I'm just, just now continuing. Yeah. The, the student said just count the number of documents they occur in. Okay, so you can count. Count takes time, right? It, it's it takes linear time with the documents. Do we have an O of one constant way of finding out? Maybe in the Zoom chat. We have the length in the index. Yep, that's exactly the right answer. Do you remember? that when we beat the standard inverted index, we have these purple rectangles. And in there, there is the length of the list. So you can, in constant time, just look that up and that gives you the length. So you can know in O of one, that here there are 10 documents, here there are 100,000, and here there are 10,000. There's no magic in there, right? It, it didn't come out of nowhere. It's because it was pre-computed when we beat the index, right? Okay, so we start with the two smaller ones, so 10,010. So we can rearrange here. I basically sort them in ascending order. And we are just going to start with this one that is the smaller one, intersect it with the, the second smaller one that basically you see reduce the size. And the reason why we do that is that very early, you're going to have very few documents left. Right? Very early, you already have very small postings lists. And that's going to be highly efficient uh, when you start, when you continue to merge. Uh, you're merging a very small list uh, with a bigger list, right? So that's already a nice optimization. There will be another one. I don't know if we'll have time today or if it will be next week, but uh, you will see that there's even ways to make it even faster when you intersect very small with very long lists, but we'll come back to that. Um, all right, so that was the end, right? The end A and D. Uh, it's not the end of the lecture, don't be. So here we have an OR, and OR is the union. For the union, um, we can approximate the length. We can approximate the length with the sum. It's actually an upper bound, right? The size of the union is going to be at most the sum of the sizes, right? So we can just sum. That gives us an approximation. And then you can compute between this, this, and this. So the ones that are separated by n. This is called, I think, the conjunctive normal form. Uh, you learned that in the, in the logic. Uh, uh, lectures. And when you have it in logical, in conjunctive normal form, then you can just estimate by adding what is in the OR uh, the sizes and then sort uh, from smaller to larger, right? And then that's it. Uh, uh, you can, uh, you can, um, uh, you can uh, uh, go left to right. And one more thing, the knot right there that I didn't talk about yet. And the idea of the knot uh, is that you also walk left to right but you work negatively, meaning that if you see something, then you consider it's not there. If you do not see something, you consider it is. So it's as if you were virtually uh, building the postings list, the inverted postings list. But since you do it on the fly, you never actually build that list, right? It's only something virtual, right? So you, you basically just do as if you were working down the, the, negated, the negated posting list, all right? Okay, so now, uh, we have this uh, simple Boolean language. Uh, there is nothing to write home about. It's the, you, 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 maybe some of you uh, uh, took the uh, compiler design lecture in the last semester, if you have this specialty in your bachelor. And uh, I'm pretty sure that if you did that, this is 
going to be very simple for you to implement if you want to. It's a very simple grammar, context-free grammar, where we have the not, the end, the or, and then the parentheses in order, that, like, like we used here, to override the, uh, the, uh, the precedence, right? All right, so now we have a simple Boolean language. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our SQL. This is the SQL of the Boolean, uh, the Boolean querying. So this is uh, the, the, the queries that we enter like this. And you know how to implement this with the standard inverted index and intersection union, uh, virtually negated lists, uh, and you can even optimize it. So you see, we've already learned a lot uh, uh, and, until now, and you're able to already build that system. You will actually play with a system like that this week in your programming exercise. Um, and of course, you won't have to do everything, right? So the TA team was kind enough to supply you with the, uh, uh, the, um, the parser that goes with that. You don't have to worry about that, uh, but you'll have to implement some of the rest in order to get a fully functional, uh, uh, simple querying engine. Right? So that's a great first milestone uh, of this lecture, what, uh, what you know how to do now. All right. So uh, as a conclusion of that part, every week we'll have one chapter of the book. So please, please, please read the book, the chapters as I give them to you. So right now, what we have completed so far is chapter one on Boolean retrieval. You will see that it's very aligned with what I have told you, but now you have a different angle by these people who explain it maybe in a slightly different way. Uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, exam material, so you should read it. And then now you have my perspective, their perspective, and, uh, and that should give you an idea. I mean, maybe some of you don't understand what I'm saying, and then these people explain it better. Maybe for some other people, it's the opposite that uh, I make more sense. I don't know. So it's uh, just uh, to give you several angles. All right. Uh, that's just a poll to, well, I can actually, uh, I can ask you. Let, let me go ahead and ask you if, you if you followed, just to check this first part, and then I'll move to the next one. So. All right, so tell me, this is about the entire chapter one. So this is what we did last week with Boolean retrieval, plus uh, what we finished this week. So just checking if you feel comfortable with that material. So the, you know, the simple query language with Booleans, uh, the standard inverted index, uh, how you look up that index in order to answer a query, how you optimize things a little bit and so on. All right, that looks pretty good. And it's wonderful that half of you got everything. That's a, that's a great start. Usually most people are in the 80% bucket. Uh, this is the expectation. All right. So I think this is it. Let me just check. I didn't have any more slides than that. And So we are basically done with this uh, part of the lecture. So um, I'm going to stop the recording here to nicely structure it so that uh, it's uh, sorted when you, when you look at it later. Uh, and I'll see you in just a few seconds, uh, starting with, uh, with the next part.